Hi, I'm Dr. Gabby Cora, and at, we're at the National Publicity Summit uh, in New York City today. With me is Howard Kay, America's wellness coach. Hi, Howard. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome, Gabby. So, Howard, tell me about your passion around wellness. Well, my passion feeds from the fact that about a year ago, I thought I was healthy. When I was younger, I was an athlete and faster and obviously younger and I thought that I was invincible and I never bothered to think about or check on my mortality. About a year ago I had both a heart attack and a stroke and it got me to research and study about how we're all vulnerable. So, so a very emotional part and, and a big drastic change in your life happened about a year ago. Yes. Tell us what did you learn from that? And how did that shape you to the work that you're doing today? Well, I've always been interested in health and nutrition. Uh, I've been a, a, a vegan for 30 years. But um, what really changed my life was the heart attack and the stroke coming right after each other. And it got me just realizing how it could be changed and how easy it was to change it. Um, and the, the, the subtitle of my book is really uh, increase your odds against ever having a heart attack or a stroke by 50%. And you only have to do two things. Now, it's too simple for some people to, to comprehend, but you have to just get healthy and stay healthy. It's just that simple. And um, what I noticed that I knew I came from a history of heart disease. I knew I had high cholesterol. I was getting it monitored sometimes but I wasn't really going to doctors and getting monitored and taking it seriously. And it's something that the one thing I could tell almost anybody and everybody to do to avoid a heart attack is to take that seriously, see what your risks are, and then to eat healthy, drink healthy, and be healthy. And that's what my book goes through, the seven essentials to life on health and happiness. So, Howard, Tell us a bit again, you felt invincible before the heart attack and before the stroke. You really felt, and you were doing many good things around your health too. So it wasn't that you were doing nothing around that. Right. The only thing is, uh, you brought this as your life mission also to educate others and help other people. Tell us again the name of your book and the subtitle. The name of the book is, uh, You Were Born Healthy, Choose to Stay That Way. And the mission is about helping people get healthy, staying healthy, and being healthy, and avoiding all the heart attacks and the strokes that come at people getting sick. Now, one of the things that you alluded to was the choice factor. Many people think they're victims of, of their life situations, and whether it's socially, whether it's financially, whether it's health-wise. Tell us a little bit about that way of making a good choice about being healthy. Well, I don't want to get into it in great detail, but there's definitely a mind-body connection to health and wellness. And it's not something to be made fun of, and it's not something to just put out there. If you think you're going to be sick, if you think you're going to get cancer or a heart attack, you probably will. Your likelihood is strong that you will. If you think that you're healthy, you're strong, you're never going to you know, get an attack of any kind, you're going to live to an old age, you probably will. There's no assurances about any of that, but how you think has a lot to do with how you are. So tell our audience, what do you do on a daily basis now to think healthy yourself? Well, I follow as close as I can the seven essentials to good health. And the number one essential uh, that I left listed in the book is that most people don't drink enough water. They're clinically dehydrated. And besides not drinking enough water, they also drink the wrong kind of water. The body is about 98% water, and most people just don't drink enough water. So, so that's a great point for, for our audience to realize how important this is. But like you also said, this the mindset that you have on a daily basis about choosing to be healthy has been helping you, and this is a way that you want to help other people. How can people reach you? Oh, they can reach me by my website at www.youwerebornhealthy.com or www.youwerebornhealthybook.com and if they go to the book website they can put their email address on, get on my mailing list and as 
there's a, 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 a ethical blog that can download free uh, health tips and uh, quotes on health and wellness by just going to we were born healthy book Com. Wonderful, Howard. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our audience? Well, uh, probably one of the most important things of all the seven tips is uh, I tell people they don't have to exercise at all. And people drop the jaw and are very surprised by that. And the reason being is that most people think exercise is a lot of hard work. Uh, the best exercise one can do, and I use exercise loosely, is to walk. I personally walk between 30 to 35 minutes, a uh, mile and a half on a treadmill uh, five times a week. But walking is one of the best exercises. If you're a couch potato, sitting on the couch and doing no exercise, you're not going to be healthy. You have to move the body. The earth moves, the blood moves, the body has to move to be healthy. So thank you so much, Howard. Howard K is here with us talking about health and wellness. So drink enough and plenty of water, walk, and also think and choose to be healthy. Thank you, Howard. You're welcome. Thank you, Doug.